the Battle of Waterloo was a watershed moment in history. Join us here on Legendary Tactics as we relive this epic battle. And we're going old school here with the uh, game Waterloo by Avalon Hill, originally published in, I believe, 1962. Um, so this is uh, wow, coming 19... up on 60 years That's uh, awesome. old <laughs> right now. Yeah, that so, is great. Yeah. And this is a, something that I, I'm hoping we can explore further here on the channel is going back to try out all these these classic games that, unfortunately, yeah. you know, time has kind of moved on and, and people don't play as much anymore. But I'm hoping there'll be... Uh, Maybe a, a new uh, legion of fans as they rediscover. Oh, and Hex uh, Encounter are just so cool. Yes. Just so. such a neat, uh, neat gaming yes. dynamic there. It's great. Yeah, so we're going to zip through a, a quick uh, how to play um, first. And uh, so I hope you uh, will stick around and learn how to play this classic, classic game. So, yeah. um, so just get a, a good view of the map board here. And again, of this, you know, by today's standards, it's pretty, pretty bland. dated. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, by it's functional and uh, certainly by the uh, standards of the day, it was pretty uh, amazing. There were no games really like this back at that time. So um, so the the map board here, um, it's it has the uh, so as you said, the old style uh, hex encounter. And there's a bunch of terrain features on here. So you'll see there are some that are double lines. Those are roads. Those are okay. primary roads. Right, right, right. The double dash lines are secondary roads. Okay. All so right. Yep. The, basically, the primary roads will give you a movement bonus. The secondary roads just help you cut through things like the woods with, okay. or, or, or rivers, rivers yeah. without delay. All right. All right. The rivers are the blue lines. And uh, basically, any... A river square is one where it the river goes uh, through two sides of the hexagon. So if you look here near Saint Armand, if you had a little bit, uh, I think that's west, you'll see it. There's like that that hex where the, where the river river ends. ends, kind of. Yes. That does not count as a river hex because technically, I guess the army can go around it. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, right, 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 right. Okay. Right, but any partial square with woods in it are are. are uh, with the green in it, that, those are woods. The slopes are the ones with the brown uh, ribbing yeah. there. Yes. And you can see it kind of gives a visual sense, like a three-dimensional sense of uh, a slope there. So you can kind of see where the, the hilltop What they were trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it, any square that's adjacent to the high side of the slope um, is uh, is a hilltop. So okay. like the high, the high ground. Yes, yeah. Okay. Now, um, as far as the edge of the board goes, only the squares that have the full six sides are, are actually going to be playable. Oh, okay. okay. So you have to actually, like, weave your way up if you want to go up the yes. side. Okay. Now, quick, just one quick question for you. Is there, right in the dead center, there's a big... Uh, blocked out line is that just to is that just where the board folds or is yeah that... that's where the bold the board folded okay so that, that is not that's anything that we have to concern ourselves with nothing to concern yourself okay with. it's not like Those a full full hexes and full terrain uh, and then and there. then the other squares that are uh, uh, sort of awkward shapes i'm guessing those are just the cities and towns eh yes so I, yes thanks for mentioning that so there there are cities they don't affect the battles or anything in any way but they do uh affect setup so they'll they'll okay. say set up in this city and you you can see uh for example uh charleroi well they have a, so that's an, that kind right, of an interesting one three see, spaces yeah and it looks like there's like some kind of fortress around it in charleroi yeah Charleroi. Yeah, so Charleroi. Charleroi. Yeah. <laughs> that's hard to say. It is. I, little... did, I, I did French in school. So it's hard <laughs> it's to still say. hard. It's yeah, that's question. right. <laughs> so the French army is blue. Fr Prussian army is uh, green. And the Anglo allied army is red. And so it's okay. basically the blue French against the green and red are their combined uh, you know, uh, allies, the okay. Prussians and the Anglo. Uh, allied army and these are all and, our, our different um, uh, military uh, pieces we, we use eh? yes so they've got uh, you'll see that, that there's a number on the on the on the left that's the combat strength the number on the on the right is the movement factors so the number of spaces they can move okay and they've got different shapes on them these are all the military uh, like formations or something designations yeah so if you see an X that's infantry if you see uh, uh, a dot with a slash through it, like this guy. That's uh, um, horse artillery. 
Um, if you see, uh, you know, something like the the these guys with the, um, the the Roman numerals in the middle, those are the the headquarters. Okay. Uh, cavalry just has a simple slash across it, and artillery has the 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 dot. Okay. Uh, now in this game, it doesn't really matter what designation they are. It's you're more concerned about the combat strength. Okay. Um, but in a, in other games by Avalon Hill, it does matter, and it's it's crucial. Okay, so it comes into play in other games. Yeah, you will need to kind of if you're interested in Avalon Hill games, you will need to learn these uh, designations. But they are good if you're reading historical books on the topic as well, because a lot of the maps have will have these uh, symbols there as it's kind of okay. a standard. A uh, real uh, quick thing. question: uh, as far as the setup goes, uh, yeah. was it historically accurate the way they they set the game yeah. up? Like, are yeah. we it's, basically it, they yeah, try to recreate I, the actual battle? Yeah. Yeah, as far as the, it is more of a game than a historical simulation. Okay. Um, but they, they, you know, it is does reflect the, you know, the strengths of the armies and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and so you can see, for example, um, let's take a look at, uh, is it Gossel? Gosselli? Yes. So you can see here, these guys all start at, on Gosselli, and there's three spaces uh, available there. Okay, so oh, so they have to be touching one of those three squares. Yeah, they have to right? be in one of those spaces. Now, okay. in any space, you can have a maximum of fifteen combat factors. So oh I can't, wow! Oh, I can't okay, combat factors. Do factor. like these three big guys here? So that's like, eighteen. Say, yeah, right, that's eighteen. Right, right. So you you have to kind of balance that out, um, and um, so you could say, okay, I'll do six, six, and three. So that there's is your fifteen. Okay, a legal a legal stack of. Uh, guys here so i'll put okay. him there the headquarters are actually kind of decorative there's a, again, oh really in, in future avalon hill games they did they have uh, abilities like command and command control and they integrate them a little more okay yeah but they didn't really you know uh, uh do that in this game um so you know so i'll just put there's 12, 12 in this stack you're here, still fine and yep. i will add nine in guys, the last stack okay nine in the last stack sure okay. so that works yep and then you're do and you need we'll, do you, do you even need that headquarters or not? Well, you know what? I honestly, I think you could play without them because they're really they don't have. There's no combat factors, and if they are ever caught on their own, then they are um, they're basically wiped out. So <laughs> there's really no. Uh, so they're basically trampled underfoot as soon as. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, basically, the the French player places their units first, and then the. Um, what they call the, the PAA player, so the Prussian Anglo Allied uh, player, then uh, places uh, their uh, units according to this, uh, what they call the situation card, uh, okay. which is the starting point. Now I'll zoom out here and I'll just swing around. Uh, now they do have reinforcements. So the French start with their entire force on the board. The uh, the uh, Prussian and Anglo, Anglo Allied uh, player gets uh, different um, uh, units. Oh, they get they get drop-ins basically. Drops. Yes, that, yeah. that arrive over the course of the of the battle. So, oh wow! So part of the strategy for the uh, Prussian and Anglo Allied player is to delay the French long enough to get some for, some reinforcements. You know? Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I was just actually looking on the uh, the left side of the map here. There's uh, a time card. Yeah. It looks like. Yes. Yeah, so over here, yeah, you got it. Yeah. So this is the basically the number of turns on the in the game. And so it, it looks like there's at, seven turns per per day. Yep. So they're two hour increments. So seven a.m. on June sixteenth, all the way till seven p.m. on June nineteenth. Yeah. So basically, a, a turn is when the French player moves any or all of their units. Um, you know, according to their individual movement factors, then they do all the French combat. And then the Prussian Anglo Allied player uh, checks their order of appearance, makes sure that they have, if there's any reinforcements that arrive, yes. then they move all their units, then they do all their combat, and that's a full turn. Uh, turn. So that, that's, 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 so that would be 7 a.m., and then you move yes, to the next then one. Yeah, you move okay. to 9 a.m., yeah. Oh, okay. And, uh, and that basically continues. That's basically the, the order of play uh, until someone wins and, and the the. Uh, Prussian Anglo Allied player wins either by avoiding the French condition of victory by the end of the time limit, so they have to make it to the end of the game without the French winning, and I'll get to that in a sec. Or if they get really lucky, they can eliminate all the French combat units. 
Okay. So oh wow. That, so that they're happens. they're more or less trying to like stave off the French. They're trying to stave off. The French player has to eliminate all the Prussian uh, Anglo. I'll call them PAA just for simple, <laughs> for simplicity. So the PAA, uh, the French player must eliminate all their units in order to win. And there's only there's two ways you can uh, uh, do that. Or sorry, yeah. So one is through elimination. So just if they, uh, just through sheer attacks through battle. and battles, they yeah. they wipe them out, or through defections. So if you look on the on the map here, so north of Waterloo, there's a road to Brussels. So for every French unit, combat unit, the French player can move off the board towards Brussels. Then the PAA player must arbitrarily remove uh, units from the game. Uh, the, whose combat factor total is twice that of the French unit. Oh, so if wow. Five, if an infantry piece moves off, a 5-4 moves off, then the PAA player has to eliminate... Remove 10. 10 combat factors. Oh, wow. And that's done at the end of the French player's turn, who can select them from anywhere, but basically there's defections that begin to happen. Um, the, the reason for that is historically... There was uh, a lot of elements within the the PAA army that was that were actually sympathetic to Napoleon. And okay, kinda, so it's kind of trying to so they, trying to mirror they, that they a little bit. They would have defected if if uh, the battle had gone differently, and so um, and the units for removal may also be selected from any group awaiting arrival on the board. If if uh, I have to remove units, I can take it off from the ones that have the appearance that, that come yeah, later the ones that are, in the game. The ones that are, yes, that are coming off the board there. Oh, yeah. okay. And if all PAA units are eliminated from the board, but remaining PAA reinforcements cannot enter because all the entrances are blocked by the French player, and the French cannot exit through units, enough units to win by defection, the PAA wins. So there can be like a default kind of... Oh. Yeah, that seems like a kind of a weird way to win, but uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, this game was kind of innovative, and it's funny when you read the rules because they're like, unlike chess, you can actually move all your units if you want to. <laughs> so oh, you can move, uh, yes. yeah, so you can move any or some or none of your units, um, and you can move them less than their movement factor. That's just the maximum that they, are and they can be moved in any direction uh, or any combination of directions. You know, it's that, that part of it, I think was pretty innovative for a lot of people. Who That's were, pretty neat. Okay. Uh, we're playing and you can combine units in any way, as long as you don't exceed 15 uh, in combat one hex. factors. Right. And uh, if you're moving a stack of units, the movement, uh, factor the slowest unit is going to be the one that dictates the speed, <laughs> but you can oh, split so you out to, if you want okay, to. Okay, okay. You can move your your six, uh, you know, unit movement factor units ahead if you want to, but but basically the the slow units don't get a a, a speed burst because they they're paired with someone that's faster. Okay. Right, and you can pass through any other units, uh, like of your own, of friendly units. Um, you get four additional movements, movement points or movement spaces on as long as it's on the road. And you get that bonus as soon as you arrive at the road. So, for example, if I go one, two, and then I want, I've want i decided to take the road, I can go one, two, three, four, and then I can, you know, finish my movement. So you can... Right. You can actually zip along kind of nice. Yeah. Zip along. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. So now I noticed, like where, where these guys are all starting, they're actually starting on a road. So would they right away get that that yeah. privilege? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you okay. can finish your movement as well. So if you if you move two, then you hop on the road for four, and then you move two off to complete your movement. Oh, so the road totally can fun. be in between your movement points. Okay. Yeah. Just can't hop on ro a different road and then get another bonus or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. What about going through forest or water? So forest. You have to you have to move only one space. So in moving into a forest, you have to stop, and then uh, basically you can, you move one space per turn until you are free of the forest. Now, if you're once you're free of the forest, so let's say I finish my movement here, yeah. now I can next turn I can go one, two, three, four. You I can, can start moving your regular, start okay, moving my regular uh, speed. movement speed. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but is th this is why the secondary roads are are good because you know they don't give a movement bonus but they allow you to cut through the the woods at a good clip so okay. you can you can um, keep moving make it through the woods you know more quickly so you, you can kind of see where natural bottlenecks are going to happen yes uh, likely because uh, with the time limit you're going to not necessarily going to be 
you know, taking going through the forest uh, generally. It's just to cause a bit too of slow delay. Yeah, exactly. And with the water, what would you do with the watering if you come up to a river? So with a river, um, you would actually uh, um, you would actually stop when you when you hit the the river. So let's say this guy is moving along, and uh, let's say let's put him. Well, let's say right around Saint Armand here. So as soon as you hit the river, you must stop, okay. and then the next turn you can just continue your movement. So the, the, the turn uh, ends for that character on the river. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's just so if if I'm in Saint Armand, I decide I want to cross the river. I can only move one. Then I have to stop, and then after that, I can move the next continue. turn. Continue. Okay. Normal, my normal uh, amount. But if you if I hit a second river, like if I do this, let's I don't know why I would, but let's say I was to go one, two, th- oh, I gotta stop again. Stop again. What about coming up to an incline here? Does that does that slow you down if you want to try nope, and climb the that incline? Does, surprisingly, that does not actually uh, cause any sort of movement delay. That that factors in in combat. Okay. Uh, basically, but uh, I was surprised. I thought there'd be some sort of delay because you're you're running up the hill, but. Apparently not. And what about going <laughs> so, into cities? Do you have to stop at a city or no? No effect. Uh, no effect. For okay. Cities. Yeah. They're, okay. They're totally uh, fine. Um, any other terrain? There's no uh, delay. Hilltops, of course, uh, don't matter. Um, and uh, you know, it's basically that's that's how that uh, how that works. So the rest of the, the the rules that I'll just touch on is the combat. Okay. And this is kind of the most the more interesting you know part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so. There's and this is a, a you know a concept that anyone who plays Avalon Hill games is going to want to know and that's something called uh, zone of control and this is something right. that has been in other games as well so um, zone of control extends in all the hexes around the unit that is um, On being co- approached that is being approached so you move into the space and you have to stop. Um, once you enter that that zone of zone control, of control okay. and you can't skip along a zone of control if you want to you know back if you want to be able to get out of it you have to back away and then you can kind of move around oh right? okay yeah so you can't uh you can't just like move around a unit the, the so there's basically a big shield around each unit exactly yeah all right and so um once you move into a space then you you um, have to have battle. So basically, any any attacking units that are are next to a, d- a defending unit have to have a battle, and every unit has to be involved in a combat in some way. Oh, okay. Um, and you re- the attacker resolves them in any order they choose, and it's it's all just done one at a time. Um, and you what you do is you add up the combat factors of the attacking units. So let's say I'm attacking you here. Okay. So this is I have three. And you have one. Right. Okay. So we zip over to this uh, combat table. And you can see that there's a three to one uh, column here. And if you roll a one, that's uh, defender eliminated. Defender eliminated is exactly what it says. All of the defending units are just eliminated. Okay. In an exchange, the lower strength stack is eliminated. And the other stack has to lose an equivalent amount of strength rounded up. So if they don't have, uh, you can't make change. So if they don't have a nice round number, they have to lose more strength points uh, than the lowest strength stack in order to make the numbers work. And that's how an exchange works. Oh, a real quick question about the uh, the odds there. The yes. first number, so it's like where we're talking three to one, that would be, yes. it's always the attacker number first, then defender, right? Yes. So if you were attacking me, it would be a one on three. Oh, so over, it's, oh, okay. There. But if I'm attacking you, it's a three on one, right? Right, right, right. So, atta- so the, the attacking yeah. forces always come first, followed by yep. the, all right, okay. <clears throat> yep. And so. Um, and what about <laughs> halves? What if it's like four on three or something? Well, then, then you can refer to this table here uh, where it's it's really hard to see on this, but four on three would be a one-on-one. So you okay. use that. Okay. And typically with when you're figuring out the odds, you need at least the amount of odds. So, you know, in order, if you have th- uh, three, if you're defending with three, I need at least six to get a two-on-one. Five ain't right. going to cut it. Okay. Um, but seven will still be a two-on-one. Seven on right. three. And so we'll... Oh, well, would, oh, an eight will be up in the air. We'll have to use yeah, the chart. Yeah, I'll need at least nine to get into the next column. Okay, so right? it's generally you need the full the full um, amount. 
Yes, yes. Okay. And that's that's fairly standard for these type of games. Um, you know, generally speaking, they try and make them as accurate as, as possible. Okay. One, one other question about the attacking. Can I, uh, as the Anglo and Prussian, can I combine yes. in one hex, can I combine both armies? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes. I think there are some variants where you, where you, where you can't, um, and you have to keep the units, the forces Separate. together, but in the, in the basic game, you can mix and match. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So just to go back to the combat, uh, uh results here so d back two is the defender must retreat two uh they have to move back two spaces they they have to avoid the enemy uh you know zones of control um they can't you know so sometimes they they if you can cut off a unit so that it can't avoid your zone of control so i'll just zip back to my uh, to my unit here so if i have another unit that is right here Yep. There's nowhere nowhere that your guy can retreat to. Oh, without being See, in zone of control. Yeah, so right. wherever he goes, there's a zone of control. So there. is he so dead? He is dead. Okay. You know, assuming he loses that eight on one battle, which I assume <laughs> he would. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he, he's basically automatically eliminated. Okay. Um so yeah, so a lot of the, the, the game is gonna be about flanking. So if you can get around units like this and kind of cut off where you're hitting them from two sides like that, that is going to be powerful in in because uh, they can't retreat. There's no there's no spot to go to, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. And then the so, other one that wasn't covered in that particular column was a limb, which is uh, I guess attacker. Yeah, eliminated. attacker eliminated. So two to one battle is kind of a 50 50 proposition, and if you roll poorly, you can really, <clears throat> even though you outnumber the other side by two, you can still uh, be over. There's still room for upset. Right. Uh, three to one and, and north of that gets much, much safer. Well, you can't. Yeah, you um, can't be. And then, yeah. of course, there's a back two, which is attacker retreats to. Okay. And again, they need to be able to be there safely. Oh, and there's um, some fine print on the bottom. It says odds greater than six to one means. Uh, automatic uh, elimination. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's yes. also. Yeah. That's probably hard to pull off. But Eddie, <laughs> if you can get a seven to one, it's a win. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, oh yeah, it's probably, well, if you have a stack of 15 against just one single unit, then yes, you could ab absolutely do it. Yeah. The, the, uh, so that's basically the, the combat results, uh, table. And, uh, now the, the other factor that I just want, and this is something that's again, part of the, the game of, um, you know, any, a lot of Avalon Hill games have this kind of thing. So. Now, what you can do is you can actually divide up your units any way you like. So if you say, well, man, I really want to, um, you know, uh, let's say here, let's just do this. Let's say I really want to automatically eliminate this uh, cavalry here. Right. And so what I can do is I can actually have these two attack as an eight on one. And then this guy attacks a three on seven, which is a one on three, I believe. So you can divide up your units or one on as two. long as, uh, no, it's because it's one on two would be, um, if this guy was a six. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Like it's, it's, I, I can double check, but I'm pretty sure it's one on three. Okay, sure. So, yeah. but the idea is that, you know, you can divide up your, your units as long as every defending unit is attacked in some way. <clears throat> and, ah, okay. you know. So sometimes there, there's a, 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 I don't know why, where it got this name, but it's called the soak off. It was soaking okay. off where you, where you have different, when you have different uh, units attacking other uh, defending units, then the attacker can divide the combat into more than one battle. And, <clears throat> and, and decide where they go. Yeah. It's, it's like almost like a big unit, battle skirmish and, and, and a contingent decides to go fight at a different spot. In yeah. The skirmish. Yeah. So yeah, you can yeah. divide, uh, unit combat against stacked units into more than one battle as long as you have more than one uh, unit so actually more maybe a better example would be something like this where i could say okay i move into attack and i'm going to attack the two just on the one the cavalry unit and this three and the six are going to attack the seven for example right okay or maybe maybe wiser would be a uh, the six and the two so there's eight on seven, then three on one would attack the cavalry. So you so can you, divide you, it you up. You sort of math it out. As... There's some yep. mathing going on here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes what you'll do is you'll sacrifice, you know, one attacking unit at like horrific odds 
in order to that's this what they call the soak off is is you know if you let's say for example uh you know i decide to attack the 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 seven strength unit with the two horrific odds but it gives me nine attack strength to attack the other unit with and kill it yeah and kill it right so yeah. sometimes you're you're you can't split up the individual units combat factors but you can split up the attacks where they go as long as they all have access to that to the units it can't be like over here or something like that and they're they're not not within range they have to be within range to, uh, to in, attack. in the zone of control <clears throat> yeah Okay. And you and you can't have a unit fight twice in a turn. And there's, I'm guessing there's no ranged attack with this one. Not in this game, no. In in future more advanced games, as they developed their games more, then it, it, it does yeah. come in. Okay. Next, we'll talk about advance after combat, which happens after a battle is won from a river space or from a slope space. Uh, if this unit retreats, let's say, or is eliminated then they're attacking from a river so they can advance after the combat um, there or at the top of a hill. And so if this guy was at the top of the hill here and these guys went charging up the hill and they eliminated the, you know, these, these guys are, or they had to retreat, then you can move up the up the hill Sorry. that one yeah, hex just, okay uh, yeah just to clarify that and zones of control don't matter you can move where you know you can move into that uh into that hex Excellent. and you can actually even do that after an exchange as well okay oh wow okay which is uh, a bit unusual because a lot of as long as the hex basically exchange... opens up you can take you can walk into it as the attacker yeah. okay yeah. what about as the defender it says well the way the rule is worded it says a unit that defeats any enemy unit while attacking from a river square ah uh, so okay yeah. or terrain there so, or the um the, the hill yes now the last uh the last bit on combat is that uh the uh when you're attacking up a slope okay so uh this is a, a terrain so you can see i've got uh what 11 combat factors here mm -hmm. okay um, when you're attacking up a slope and someone's on the hilltop, they get double their oh, combat strength. Oh, so that's so eight. That's sixteen. This would be 16. eleven on six on sixteen. Right. Which is a one on two. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, so <clears throat> that is the, you know, that's and that is also true if you're attacking from a river square. The defending units here are going to get their combat factors doubled. Ah, okay. Right, so that that's the, you know, the the big defensive, uh, you know, <laughs> the the big defensive uh, situation. You're going to want to be on the hilltops, and you're going to want to be anywhere, not a river square. <laughs> you know, um, basically, uh, you know, when someone's attacking from a river square, then you've you've got the advantage um, there. So. So the map is going to offer all sorts of interesting spots which are very easily defendable, you know, or um, where you're going to want to have units guarding, you know, around the rivers so that, you know, anyone trying to cross will get uh, hammered. So that's, that's you know, going to be okay. part of the, the strategy. The strategy of the game. Yeah. yeah. It seems to me that you definitely want the high ground. Yes. It's a bit of that's... a race to the high ground, I think. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, just and a few other quick. Uh, other than that, that's that's basically honestly the 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 game is just a couple of other rules that I'll I'll highlight. Um, if you're uh, moving, I'll just move these guys over here. If you're moving um, out of a zone of control, as I said earlier, uh, you uh, you can't you know just move around them. You have to move out of the the zone of control. But on the same turn, you can't re-enter. That same uh, zone, same units, uh, you know, zone of control. Okay. Um, you know, you you can move into a different enemy's zone of control. Let's say it's here, you move away, and then over there, space there. Okay, yeah. so that could be it. That that is allowed. <clears throat> yes, you have to break contact, break contact, basically. So. Okay. Yeah, and then, um, uh, yeah. So the and then uh, the other thing is that you you know you normally have to stop when you move in move to a river. Uh, as I said, and you can move from there. You can move along the river, though. So if you, 
because you're not technically crossing. You're moving, say, one, two, and then three, four. You're moving okay. along the river. That's fine. And you and uh, there was something about the very edge of the river as well, where you can yeah, actually that's it does not, not considered count. a river hex. Because you can kind of walk around the edge. Go, there. Yeah, you can walk around the edge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one quick question, just about yes. you mentioned the where it says two Brussels, and if the if the French player gets pieces off, yes. then uh, the PA has to eliminate double. What yes. about this? Uh, there's a second arrow I noticed over here. It says uh, two, uh, two brain le compte. Oh yes. So is yes. that another arrow that would count as that, well, or no? Well, if you look on your on your um, on your uh, order of battle here, yep. You see these guys. They, these enter in the road to Brain le Comte. Oh, okay. So oh, that's okay. Where, where these guys come in. So from. they'll be they'll be so entering that's, that. <laughs> that's okay. where they'll be entering. Now they can't enter if there's a zone of control uh, there. Then then you can't put like so. If if I'm guarding that road. And I'm blocking it. Let's say I'm right here, for example. Then you can't enter that uh, that space. Okay. Oh, so, okay. So, but what you can do is is you is you basically go uh, clockwise. You can enter the next road in. So you'd be able to come in At on Hall. Hall then if I okay. blocked that that hex. Oh, I so, see. Um, so that may be an interesting strategy as well. If you're looking to kind of control where people, you know, Funnel where the them. enemy enters, you can block out, block the roads. So that and you must go clockwise. You can't go counter. That's yes. It says there. Uh, okay. In the in the rules, it's the next unblocked primary or secondary uh, road looking clockwise around the board. Okay. Yes. So, and if for example you 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 forget to bring in units when scheduled, you can bring them on any time later in the game. And you can purposely delay their their uh, entrance if you like. You no, know, yeah, and uh, yeah. There's a few other like, uh, as I said, there's a few little like little rules. Like for example, if you are forced to retreat onto a, you can retreat through your your friend your friendly units. But if you're forced to retreat onto a space where you're overstacking, then you have to eliminate the overstacking. So you'd have to lose units until you're down to 15 units. Oh, uh, okay. For, yeah, so there's a few things like that, but those are you know kind of sp almost special case uh, kind of rules. So right, right. We have, we have our handy dandy rules here if we have to ever uh, you know dust them off. Yes. For, for, yeah. for fine tuning. Yeah. Uh, I do have a question. If it's forced to retreat off the board, then it's eliminated. For example, or actually, if it actually I should say as well, if it's forced to retreat onto or across a river, it's eliminated. So that's something as well. That's so, not a small rule. One question. It's just uh, right below the uh, the combat table, and I think on the other end there's yours as well. Um, there are variant pieces. Are they are they just for basically like yeah, add-ons um, to the game or? Yeah, I, I I assume so. It's not something that's covered in the basic rules. So um, okay. if you'll notice, uh, this is something that uh, is over here. They do have a ten-sided die variant uh, over here. So. Oh okay. <laughs> this is they've actually got a the module has a 10 sided die over here in the setup yes and and they've got the the rules there the classic game was was a six sided die but the uh you know you can see it's got a few other um it's like half attacker elimination right so it's not a full attacker elimination it's got a couple of other kind of exceptions uh or little okay. changes that way okay well, I look forward to, uh, you know, staving you off for an entire 28 yes. rounds. <laughs> <laughs> or twi yeah, 20, yeah, is it 28 turns? I, 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 there, I believe there's seven rounds oh, per yeah, day. And there's right. four yeah. days. So, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's <clears throat> yeah. A, so, a lot of battles. <laughs> yeah, so th this ended up being longer than I expected. But, uh, but uh, you know, it's, a, it's not a hard game, but there's, you know, a few little rules here and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it, the rule book is kind of funny to read as well, because it's like, if you have any any rules questions, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope oh. uh, with, your, with your question <laughs> and we'll answer it. You know? I have so, a feeling that it might be returned to sender now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, we're going to give this a, a, a playthrough and, uh, you know, and uh, give this game some exposure, which I think it... Uh, it needs. And yeah, so, if you have it on your shelf, uh, maybe it's time to dust it off and give it a try. Yeah, so 
Um, but thanks uh, very much for uh, you know sitting through and uh, learning how to play this great game. And we'll uh, see you next time here on Legendary Tactics. Uh -huh.